Have you made the decision to add a new dog to your home, but you're not quite sure what the right breed for you is? Well, in this video, we'll take a look at two different breeds that could make the perfect canine companion, the Maltese and the Malinois. Welcome back to the Fenrir Maltese Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. So let's dive into today's video where we'll be comparing these two beautiful breeds. Let's begin today's video by briefly touching upon the history of the adorable little Maltese. Did you know that they're one of the oldest breeds around? Their ancestors can be traced as far back as 600 BC. As the name Maltese suggests, they are believed to have originated in Malta. In their early existence, they were both companion dogs and working dogs. They were a strong favourite amongst the ladies of importance and widely known as a comforter for the Roman ladies. But they were also a popular choice of sailors. Sailors were able to use them as a bartering tool to acquire food while away at sea or docked in a foreign land, but they also served a more practical purpose, keeping rats and other rodents away from the ship's food supplies. The breed was nearly destroyed in the 17th and 18th centuries when attempts were made to breed them to the size of a squirrel. This experiment was disastrous and resulted with breeders having to mix several different breeds in and attempt to save it. They became extremely popular amongst British royals and nobility towards the end of the 16th century, with Elizabeth I, Mary Queen of Scots and Queen Victoria said to have been fans. The Maltese that we know today was developed and fine-tuned in the UK. They were first imported into the United States in the late 19th century, but they have really become popular since the 1950s and they're now one of the most popular breeds amongst spectators at dog shows. The Belgian Malinois, as the name suggests, originated in Belgium. They're one of four varieties of Belgian sheepdogs that were developed in the late 19th century. The modern day Malinois can be traced back to this time and more specifically to a breeding pair owned by a Belgian shepherd named Adrian Jensen. In 1885 he purchased a rough haired fawn dog called Voss that he used to herd flock but also bred with a short haired brindle brown dog named Lise. After this initial mating Voss was bred with his daughters to further establish the line of grey rough and short haired Malinois and fawn rough and short haired Malinois. Today Voss and Lise are recognised as the ancestors of all modern Belgian shepherd dogs as well as the Bouvier and the Dutch Shepherd. Breeders decided to give each variety of Belgian shepherd their own names. A breeder named Louis Hugo Barrett had done a lot to popularise the fawn short haired Malinois in the city of Malane. The Malinois name was adopted from the city to refer to the fawn short haired Belgian shepherd. Hugo Barrett recognised that there was a lack of sheep in Belgium towards the end of the 1800s and turned to showcasing the Malinois' intelligence, obedience and loyalty. Because of this, they were used in the early 20th century as guard dogs and draft dogs. They were also the first breed to be used by the Belgian police. During the First World War, they had many roles in the military, including messenger dogs, Red Cross dogs, ambulance cart dogs, and even light machine gun cart dogs. After the First World War, many American servicemen brought back Malinois and other Belgian Shepherd dogs. The first Belgian Shepherd Club of America was formed in 1924, and they were officially recognised by the American Kennel Club shortly after. The Maltese is one of the smallest breeds around, standing up to a height of 10 inches or 24 centimetres at the withers, and weighing up to 8 pounds or 4 kilograms. They were a perfect breed for any allergy sufferers, as they have an hypoallergenic coat. They don't have an undercoat so they shed very little. They're described as a small dog with a regal appearance. Maltese dogs have long feathered ears that hang close to their heads. They have a broad muzzle, short straight legs. Their tail curls upwards over their backs which adds to their regal appearance. They have a long straight pure white coat that falls all the way to the floor. Being a long haired breed they do require daily grooming so make sure you have the time to dedicate to this task or you could end up with a severely tangled coat filled with dirt and debris. They did once come in a range of colours however these no longer exist and white is the colour available however lemon coloured markings are accepted by the kennel club. The Belgian Malinois is a medium sized Belgian shepherd that's often confused with the German shepherd. They're a short haired fawn coloured dog with a black mask. Males will grow up to a height of 26 inches or 66 centimetres at the withers and weigh up to 75 pounds or 34 kilograms. Females are a little bit smaller with a maximum height of 24 inches or 61 centimetres and weighing up to 60 pounds or 27 kilograms. Their coat's short and straight and their fur is particularly short around the head, ears and lower legs. They do have slightly longer hair around the neck forming a collar but not so much that it stands out. 
They were a double-coated breed that generally shed twice a year. They'll need brushing at least twice a week to keep their coat healthy and to encourage new growth. The Maltese is a small breed that doesn't require a large amount of exercise, making them perfect for people who don't have a lot of time to spend going for walks or struggle to get out. 30 minutes of exercise a day should be more than enough. You can also try getting them involved in dog sports like agility, obedience and tracking, as they excel in sports like these. Maltese dogs are also known to be very vocal. This does make them good watchdogs. You should teach a Maltese when's the right time to bark, for example, alerting you to someone at the door or to intruders. They shouldn't be left alone to bark whenever they want to, as this can cause issues between you and your neighbourhood. The Maltese is a sweet-natured breed that just wants to please their owners. This makes training in obedience and manners quite easy, especially with calm, consistent training. Their nature and love of their owners causes this breed to suffer from separation anxiety. It's important that you teach your Maltese straight away that it's okay to be alone sometimes and that you'll always return back home after you leave the house. If separation anxiety is not dealt with, it can lead to unwanted behaviours such as chewing, barking and toileting in the house. The Malinois is an intelligent and active breed that truly thrives in many tasks. They have a great deal of stamina and enjoy working, which makes them great breed for police work, search and rescue and performance events like agility. They're also a sensitive breed and don't respond well to harsher training methods. Due to this combination of high energy and sensitivity, they're not recommended for first-time owners and instead for those experienced with dog training. They love for everyone to be included in family activities, so they're not well suited to a home where the family's out every day at school or work. They're quick learners and eager to please. As we've already touched upon, they thrive at dog sports, but they also love to play. They've been described as having a high play drive, as almost anything you ask them to do is like play to them. You should address this desire to play through exercise. They're a very high energy breed and you should try to aim for at least 90 minutes of exercise each day, which is best split into three 30 minute sessions. It's not just physical exercise they need, but also mental stimulation. Try and incorporate this as part of a variety of games and exercises like runs, walks, hikes, fetch, a game of hide and seek, puzzle games and snuffle mats. Without mental and physical exercise, Malinois can become destructive and show behaviours like barking, chewing, anxious pacing, going to the toilet in the house and general destructive behaviour. So be sure you can dedicate plenty of time to exercising when choosing a Malinois because a tired dog's a happy dog. A well socialised Maltese generally gets along great with children and other pets. However, one common issue with this breed is that they can form strong attachments to only one member of the household. This especially happens if they're overly pampered or spoiled. If they become too attached to one person, they can become overprotective and this can lead to unwanted behaviours like barking at and even mouthing at anybody that they see as a threat. A great way of avoiding this is getting the whole family involved in their daily grooming routines. As we've already touched upon, this long-haired breed needs brushing every day to keep their coat tangle free and clean. So getting everyone involved in this activity, take it in turns to carry out the daily grooming so that your Maltese becomes comfortable with everyone in the house and doesn't form an attachment to only one person. They're a small breed that can easily be harmed, so it's essential that you teach your children how to handle and treat them properly. Well socialised Malinois make good family companions. They're great with children, especially if they've been raised around them. It's important to remember that they have a strong herding heritage, and this can sometimes lead to them to nip at children's feet and heels during playtime. An adult Malinois who's not familiar with children would be better suited to a home with older children who are mature enough to know how to properly interact with dogs. This is worth thinking about if you're thinking of adopting or rescuing an older dog. You should always teach young children how to approach and touch your Malinois and supervise any interactions between them to prevent bad behaviours from either side. Malinois can become dominant towards other dogs and cats unless they've been raised alongside them. If you want them to get along well with other dogs and animals, it's important to start socialisation early. Ensure you use positive reinforcement and reward appropriate behaviour. The breed does have a naturally high prey drive and natural hunting instincts which can make them challenging with other small domestic pets. This isn't to be said that they can't get along well with them if they've been well socialised and raised alongside them. However, they should never be left unsupervised as accidents can happen. The Maltese and the Malinois are two very different canines. It's important, as we've already said, to not spoil the Maltese, especially if you have children, as they can become jealous. If they've been properly socialised and trained, either the Maltese or the Malinois will make an excellent canine companion. It's down to personal preference and if you can suit either canine's needs. I'm sure that whichever canine you choose, you won't regret it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down in the comments section below. And don't forget, if you are new here, to make sure you subscribe. We have three dedicated Maltese videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Maltese Show.